So I'm heading to... I forgot my ND filter. Okay. Um, I'll do this on my phone. So, I'm heading over to see Jack at War Daddy Miniatures. We're going to have a little bit of an experiment today. A little bit of a challenge for your boy. And we're going to see if we can take some miniatures that have seen better days that we bought for cheap. We're going to see if we can do a quick slapdash paint job on them. And we're going to see if we can do a decent markup. And whether painting miniatures for a living is a living. If you don't know, and percentile wise, there's a fair likelihood that you don't, War Daddy Miniatures is a small online trader trading through eBay and supporting a family off the back of it. We're going to go behind the curtain, see how this surprisingly simple business model works, and how you, me, anyone with enough persistence can make a living from it. And you won't ever need to paint on a commission basis. Oh! But first, let's see how Jack got started and how this very unique artistic background got him to where he is now. What's your artistic background? What do you used to do for a living? My artistic background, my old job. Yeah. I was a bin man. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so neither myself or Jack are god tier competition level painters, and that's what makes War Daddy Miniatures so sick is that it's just normal tabletop painters getting over in the business. I used to, when I was a lot younger, obviously, used to paint old Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah. Had a 20 year gap and then uh, picked it up again a few years ago, about four or five years ago. Found it very therapeutic and uh, good for your mental health. And how I got into actually selling it, my brother uh, approached me because he just started a game called Bolt Action, right. World War II game. Yeah. Uh, wanted me to paint a starter set for him. Cool. Paid me 100 quid for it, so I thought, oh, I always liked to enjoy painting. Yeah. It's good at art at school. Yeah. But uh, yeah. GCSE? I've got a B, I think. So yeah, you've got an art qualification. Yeah. <laughs> He's a verified artist, it's all fine. Professional. After my brother got me to uh, do the bot action stuff for him, I yeah. sort of like, like light bulb went off. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, people pay me to paint. I enjoy painting. Win-win. Yeah, yeah. So, you did do some commission in the past. Yeah, yeah. I've done some commission in the past. I didn't really enjoy it. Does anyone enjoy commission painting? Um, I, I don't think so. There's a lot who start doing it with the impression that they're going to enjoy it. Well, that's it. I enjoy painting, but I hate commission painting. Yeah, yeah. What's the, the commission you've, in the past, enjoyed the least? <laughs> yeah. One guy, uh, he wanted me to paint a World War II soldier, but he wanted me to paint it with his face. But it was just a generic... I was like, oh, so I messaged him, how would you want me to paint it like you? Because he, he didn't have any like distinctive features. He was just an, an, you know, he wasn't normal. purple or no, anything. No, no, like right. normal looking guy. I was like, yeah. right, I'm going to paint this soldier to look like him. So I messaged him, he's like, well, can't you just sculpt the face a bit to make it look like me? I was like, I'm not a sculptor. So I just painted it as I'd paint any figure, sent it to him and he was happy. I mean, unless he looks like <laughs> like Peter Cushing or, <laughs> or I don't know, something very distinctive like Mr. T. It's, it's not exactly... Um... There's a lot that I've enjoyed painting, but then when I've actually sent them to the, the person, they've, they've had a lot of like niggles about it. It's like, oh, I've literally just you know, put like two weeks work into this. Well, that's, that's your fault for fucking enjoying yourself, wasn't it? Well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> so, commission painting's off the table, and yeah, commission painting can be an absolutely joyless, thankless task. For me, it wasn't so much spending the weeks on the project and letting it go, it was spending the weeks on the project I had no interest or inspiration for, which is the burden of probably most commercial creatives, I'm sure. What Jackie Boy's first step to fulfillment is, however, is surrounding himself with fucking mountains of gear. So there's always something and everything to paint, which I imagine is a situation quite a few of yourselves are in. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Shitload of stuff. A terrifying amount of stuff. You are really well organised, which is actually also adding to how uncomfortable I am. That's the OCD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have it too, it just doesn't work. <laughs> what is your current business model? So I'll buy large armies, mm -hmm. some nice, some not so nice uh, paint jobs. Terrible. <laughs> some some <laughs> terrible. 
obviously I'll get those, I'll uh, see what needs doing to them. Yeah. You know, some, some need, just need a bit of basing doing to them. Yeah. Some need a complete repaint. Yeah. Uh, I'll split them into smaller lots and uh, sell them off. And it seems to be uh, working out better that way. Okay. Some people just need like a unit to finish off their army, so they'll uh, see what I've got. And that is one thing that I do get when I get, because obviously I get a lot of parcels, uh -huh. and like most of them, you know, 90% of them are well packed. But you do get some that literally just poured a load of miniatures into a box. Like fucking Lego. Yeah. <laughs> Sheet of bubble wrap on the top of them. You just get it, it's rattling, you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fuckers. <laughs> It does sound easy and it does sound doable. And it is also doable just from a garage and having an eBay account. I'm sure there is some fucking pissers and moaners who'll dig in and say eBay isn't the way forward and it's all about friendly local game stores. But how many friendly local game stores do you know that sell secondhand pre-painted minis? I mean, they should, don't get me wrong. They'd make way better bank than, you know, selling brand new Warhammer. This is something I've tested and seen in action in a brick and mortar shop myself but not many do it, which is an interesting thought for the day. But even more interestingly, regular War Daddy customers are happily paying more, sometimes twice the RRP, for painted and finished items. I've got a bit of experience selling Brand New Games Workshop, I've got a bit of experience selling second-hand stuff. Selling the brand new stuff is an agonizing, tedious process. It's, it's The mark upon it is dog shit. Yeah. Um, but an interesting thing you mentioned last time, because something's painted yeah. and it, the work is tidy, people sometimes do actually pay more. Yeah, that's I, I charge for the paint job rather than like yeah. a lot of people. I know it's if they want rid of something, they'll just sell it dirt cheap and stuff. But the way I think about it is how long did that paint job take? Yeah. You know, the quality of the paint job. Yeah. Is someone else going to be able to do that paint job themselves? I mean, a lot of people can, but some people can't. Yeah. So you're paying for that. It's... So people are paying more. Yeah, than yeah. a brand new price for a finished item. Oh yeah, you'd be yeah. surprised. That's interesting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, D-Dog, what's going on? Shh, baby. What are you wearing? What do you mean? You told me to come in uh, incognito. Incognito Tony, incognito Todd. What? Anyway, what are you doing? I'm spying on War Daddy Miniatures to see how he makes a living off miniatures. Huh, <laughs> well. It sounds like if War Daddy Miniatures had a website from Squarespace, we'd be able to get all the information out there. That's, that is tenuous, mate. Nothing tenuous about it, D-Dog. With the provided prefabricated templates from Squarespace.com, War Daddy Miniatures could get started on building his dream website in minutes. It even has templates so that War Daddy Miniatures could make an online store and work directly with his customers. Wait, for the $40 for a wallet? All right. Let's put something on there that people really want to buy, and let's see how easy it is to do this. Here you go, T T Tony in a hat. Here we go. Everybody wants a Tony in a hat. All right, well, then that's too cheap. Let's put a real price in there. Five, five something. There we go. That took me like 30 seconds. Now I'm on sale. Tony in a hat. Five billion dollars. What's going on, guys? Tony here, and uh, here's a few start to truck memes that uh, tickle your something fierce. Yeah. And again. 30 seconds tops, and I'm starting to already construct my first portfolio page. I ain't very creative, so we're just using Star Trek memes, guys. So come on, War Daddy Miniatures. Like everybody else, head to squarespace.com forward slash MS Paints using the code MS Paints at checkout to get 10% off your first website subscription or domain name. All right. <sighs> What's his secret? <laughs> Maybe he's running a laundry in there. Well, I don't see any washing machines. I'm just thinking of a different kind of laundry. So I left Jack to crack on with some of his orders for the day while I got some B-roll, and it got me thinking. As a wee experiment, could someone like myself run this kind of business? I'm not the best painter, I'm not the fastest painter, and my shakes often limit the caliber of stuff that I can put out consistently. But with that in mind, I actually want to give this a go and see what I can do, just as just as a cheeky tester. So once Jack had sent off this parcel, we got down to business and started digging in the crates. 
this is all of his yet to paint Middle Earth stuff. I've never painted anything from that line before, so I'm, I'm pretty hyped to have a go at this, to be honest. Or I was, until I saw what he was giving me. A rare metal Battle of khazad set, complete with, you know, Balrog and Gandalf. And a pretty rare mounted gambling variant, again, in metal. Jack also sent me away with some Space Marine test prints, which I'm going to use on a kill team board themed around a hall of heroes with these as statues. And some old school metal Space Marine stuff for my upcoming nightly Space Marine army series. Ugh, and it wouldn't be nightly Space Marines if the bastards weren't put together with Uhu glue. Warhammer and Uhu glue. That's so 90s it hurts. Onto painting, or rather stripping. I did a whole video about chemicals for stripping miniatures in this video here, so check that out if you want more details. I've got a couple of hours between things to do, so I'm gonna go with bio strip and get this Bukaki going. With everything stripped, we can finally see what's underneath. In some cases, it's lots of beautiful detail. In others, like the Balrog, it's mountains of green stuff and mold lines. So let's do a basic cleanup first. A lot of people shit on metal models, and with no good reason. Sure, they don't fit together perfectly, they chip easily, they're prone to falling apart from being too heavy on larger models, and you apparently need Uhu glue to hold them together. For me, nah, love metal models. There's something just so legit about a paperweight dreadnought. Is it really even a dreadnought if you can't put someone's window through with it? So here's a neat little method that I've found for plugging and smoothing gaps with Milliput. Wet brush, one that's been pre-loved, and mash that Milliput into the cracks and pummel it into shape. Hand sculpted models like this are so easy to sculpt over and restore. I guess I'm basically doing what the sculptor did 22 years on, right? And once he's primed, yeah, okay, I'm sold on that. I'm no sculptor, but I think that is decent. Considering how big those gaps were. This boy Duran's Bane is supposed to be a shadow wreathed in flame. So I'm gonna keep all of the body as dark and as matte as I can go. And another little thing that I came up with due to my MS, I'm pretty shaky and don't fancy the thought of painting in those cracks so I'm loading up on ink and just letting it find its way into the cracks by just kind of dribbling it in really. Looks messy at first but once you tidy the black up it's an all-round easier more effortless way of doing things like this. It probably makes some sick lava bases this way actually. And here's an interesting thing I often see people do the opposite of in fact this model was originally painted this way. When painting fire start with browns and oranges towards the source and then work your way up to bright, which isn't really how fire works. Where it's hotter, it burns brightest. It's toward the cooler part of the flame where the real yellows and oranges come in. So we start light at the bottom and get darker. You can even dry brush a cheeky bit of black on top. And the great thing about fire, of course, is you can do it with contrast paint. Really thin yellows over the whole thing, and then use the same yellow over the cooler areas to lean it towards a darker, more saturated orange look. So the weather was against me here in a record high of 40 degrees C in the hottest room in the house, so my wet palette kept drying up Wet blending just wasn't happening. Every time I turned my back, my paint had dried on my brush and completely ruined it. So I'm just gonna ham fist my way through this guy and get to the finish. I'm pretty sure Jack bought him in the state that he was for the value of about three pounds. So even stripped, 
and not paint it, we'd be looking at a markup. So this is already an improvement. I only wanted to drop about three hours each on these minis because what's the point of getting a small markup on eBay if it's going to take you two weeks per mini? And ultimately, someone may just want to paint over it and fuck off these paint jobs anyway, so hey. The Balrog was about five and a half hours, Gambling took about three hours, and I made up for overtime with Gandalf, who took half an hour. Now I just need to add some light texture. Uh, of course, that's at the studio and not at home. I have no texture paint. Okay, time to venture into this 40 degree heat. If you've ever wondered what 40 degree heat with multiple sclerosis is like, it's like being drunk and angry and needing to shit and needing to cry at the same time. Okay, what kind of varnish do we want on these guys while I'm here? I have something in satin. Nope, not on that price. And we're going to go for something matte. Return visit to War Daddy Miniatures. Got the three models painted. Fucking hell, it's hot. Fucking hell. It's just such a weird little estate because it seems to be, where I look, everyone's beautiful. It seems to be entirely composed of Amazonians in yoga pants and just buff dudes in muscle shirts. Like, is this some kind of government research estate? Everyone here gets a house if they've got a specific genetic profile. You've got to be buff and attractive. Oh, I see, there's a, there's a David Lloyd at the end of the street. So they're back, ready to be photographed, ready to go through Jack's highly advanced photo editing software and to be listed on eBay. How much did they sell for? Well, that's the good news. We can take part in this little experiment together. Down below are the links to the miniatures, the Casa Doom, Balrog and Gandalf set is up for auction and the gambling is listed as buy it now. They did cost us less than RRP, way less, and we're hoping with the restoration and paint jobs they'll at least get their RRP back. Hopefully Casey at eBay Miniature Rescue doesn't get them just so I have to watch him strip them and repaint them in front of me. So check the links and let's see what they go for when they end. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me in everything I do here on the channel. And if you have any interest in supporting MS Paint and joining our Ewok Village Discord, check the link at the end of the video. But for now, cheers, I'm out of here.